I'm doing a store tour again. Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, and today, believe it or not, I'm doing a store tour again. Haven't been here, haven't worked here in over five years. It's crazy for me to see where my employees have taken it and like the penetration of our products in our own store, which that becomes a duh, but when I see it, I go, oh my gosh, we've actually kind of accomplished something here. So let's get to the tour. So I thought I'd start at the front of the store, what you would see when you walk in. This is the door. You've got a couple of awards. Back in 2019, we were pretty good at customer service. Turns out, still pretty good. Back in uh, 2014, I became a master aquatic horticulturist. Lots of wood to choose from. Small driftwoods, small spider woods, medium driftwoods, medium spider woods. Extra large, large. We're down to just two rows of bettas. Oh no! That's because we're making the store three times as big and they're already staged and better. Right now, all of these bettas that we have here, look at this cutie, they're all on a sump. And the dripping water, they all share a little bit of water. Now, in the new system, they don't share any water and they get four water changes, partial water changes every day. So we have upgraded these, we made the lights better, just in better, or in general, they are better. So we've got, I think, six of these on the other side. So this is just what we have until we can open up the other side. Uh, more sticks, manzanitas, some signage in the front window. That's right. Then we start turning the corner and that's where we start seeing our products. We've got our tanks that we only sell in the retail store so far. But, you know, they, there's big demand for them. Stores want them. We want them. Uh, you know, people want to ship them. And these are just cool, like, people can come and buy this, right? So this tank is 60 bucks. You can buy it with the light and the wood, and it's all scaped. It's ready to go. The chicken bone stone, the sponge filter. They're ready to go. These little fancy mountains that we sell in the back. This is carved ceru stone. Pretty cool. And then we turn the corner... Lots of pond products, but you guys want to see the fish, even though we've got all of our foods here. And we stock lots of foods on the shelf because right now it's Friday night, but tomorrow it is about to get slammed in here. And so, you know, we got to be stocked up. Now, that's one of my pet peeves that Dean was even pointing that out to me is so many stores this day and age don't have enough fish. You know, they're looking like this, where you walk in, you're like, yeah, you have some fish. Right? Like, where's the fish? Like, there's some, some black emperor tetras, right? $4.99. Some Loretto Corys. These guys are super cool at $10.99. Enhance. Those little cuties. And then, yeah, we've got locally bred by, I think it's Dean, <laughs> Candy Stripe Plecos. We've got the bamboo shrimps right there. But this is more what we need to be stocked at, and this is why we had to make the store bigger is this amount of like neon tetras <clears throat> will get decimated tomorrow not all of them but we go through a lot same with the silver tip tetras and these guys are super duper cool if you keep them in a big group why they should they should do the move are you gonna come to me my magical oh, all the all the cars are but when the cars aren't the silver tip tetras do this normally i wonder if they learned it from these guys but normally they would go back and forth back and forth so yeah, electric blue Acaras up there for $18.99, $3.29 for your silver tip tetras. Live plants in almost every tank. Down low, lots of Madaka rice fish. Assorted, all different types. Got the black ones, got the silver ones, got the orange ones, got the slightly blue ones. We've got that Farlawala, the Royal Farlawala on the also known as kind of a twig cat, on the twig. And then some uh Paleatus corridoras. With some plants, of course. Right next door, you got orange laser catfish. These guys are pretty sweet. Used to breed those a lot. You can find that video in the fish room. 
where I was doing that. These guys sure are catching my eye, these Black Emperor Tetras. Pretty cool. Up top, we got lots of Leopard Danios. Kind of a nice, cheap fish to get started. Still a cool fish regardless of price. This fish is just neat looking. Look at that, pretty cool. Also some Pearl Grammys, which are hiding in the back. Over here we got the Diamond Tetras, and I think these look super cool. I'm a big fan of Diamond Tetras. We've also got the, uh, the, the Gudgeons in there. These little buttes. Enhance, there we go. Now we've got the Long Fin Zebra Danio. And they also actually have mixed in Leopard Danios. You can see it right there, you see that guy? That's a Leopard. Leopard. Zebra. We also got the reticulated hillstream loaches, some Epistogramma trifossiata at $22.99. Ooh, look at that goby right back there. A little hidden. Hiding, a little blue spot. Or blue cobalt goby, my bad. Down low, ooh, we've got some cool fish down here. We've got the rams, the Bolivian rams, right here. But these little hummingbird tetras or darter tetras are super neat. They perch. So like on top of the sponge filter here, they just perch. Not your normal tetra behavior. Got a bunch of them down here too. And then you've got the zigzag spiny eel. He's, uh, he's, not, he's not one for the camera. He's going, hey, I like to stir up your, your, your mulm. And I'm um, fighting with Sheila over here in the uh, cave. That's right, Sheila. You got the cave. Ooh, another one in the pot. Not mostly nocturnal on those guys. Right next door, we've got some albino corridoras and some sword tails. Right? Go up a notch. Ooh, ah. Green fire tetras. These guys look super cool if you have a lot of red plants. They're kind of too green and they mesh in with green plants, so not my favorite if you have a ton of green plants. Got this Parapleco, $69.99. Some Epistogramma Borelli. These guys stay small. Kind of a cool fact about them is they can, they can be uh, cooler water. So if you're trying to extend your season outside in a pond and you're gonna bring them indoors, you can still use those. So I learned that tip from a guy in California. He's like, yeah, Epistogramma Borelli do amazing outside where I am in California. Glow light Tetras. A plenty. 249, nice cheap fish with a lot of color. Some assorted, locally raised angelfish. Some bleeding heart tetras and some small clownies. I gotta get some clown loaches back in my life. Down here we've got some serpe tetras. Looks like a couple of them might even have a little bit, little bit longer fins like that guy. Kinda looks long finish. Some of the some of the gene. We've also got some Epistogramma cockatoides. Super reds, because all the fins are red. With a herd of panda quarries and a Colombian whiptail catfish. I see it back there, but I don't really know that fish well. Yeah. Oh, there's one right here, too. Kind of got that whiptail. Enhance. Enhance. Kind of enhanced. Over here, we've got some, one of these, cardinal tetras. I was looking up top, so it, it just seemed like I was extra slow and stupid on camera, but I was looking up here to go, ooh, do these super reds look good, mediums? And they do, with the red phantom tetras. Uh, but yes, we do have the cardinal tetras, we do keep them a bit warmer. We've also got the Sturbach Corridoras, and the Midnight Rams, locally bred. These ones are not bred by Dean, but you see the temp? We rock 83. They do really well in warm temps. You don't give them the warm temps, they don't do so well. Got the Madagascar lace plants. We don't sell those online. They can be a little touchy when they come in, so kind of pick them out in person. Uh, oh, yeah, we got the Vienna guppies down low, locally bred. These ones are not bred by me, but I did bring them into the country. So that's kind of cool. Got a grip of rummy nose tetras, looking nice and big and fat and sassy. Wow. Oh, I brought these in for me. They must have brought some in also. Uh, the dwarf Claro plecos are super cool. We probably won't see any on camera here, but they only get like this big, and they're a bristlenose you can totally breed, but they stay really small, which is awesome. 
Up top, we got the candy cane Tetra. These guys are a must have for Christmas for candy cane. When you buy 10 or more fish, you get 10% off of all those fish. So if you buy 10 of these, you get one free basically, or you're 10% off. And we do that with all fish in the store. So as long as you're buying the same ones, you can't be like two of these, one of those, six of that. It's gotta be 10. This has one of my favorite loaches and one of the rarest fish that for me to get for a long time. And that is these pygmy multi-striped loaches. These little, little buttes, if it'll focus, focus on this beauty. There you go. They don't get a whole lot bigger than that. So they're, you know, in there here with endlers and you can see the endler size. They're just a really, really cool loach. And I think they're a bargain at $9.99. They were basically $9.99 like eight years ago. So that's a bargain price in my opinion. Got some endlers and a super red long fin. You can see those in here, locally bred by the way. These little guys. Down low on the dark substrate, which I like. Got all these gold barbs. Good algae eaters uh, with the cribs. I don't think gold barbs get enough love. Look at that like orangey gold they got going on. They get about three and a half inches. I like them a lot, but they don't get a lot of play. We got gold rams in here mixed with some lemon tetras. And then in the back, the dwarf petracolas. Focus on them in the back, down low. What, oh, clown pleco somewhere hidden in here? Yeah, right. I mean, I'm sure they're in here, but enhance there we go nice little petricola all the black phantom tetras in the world right up here lots of them they look really good the males and females females have that little bit of red the males get that blue uh and black going on pretty good tank of black neon tetras great for a beginner tank down here we've got the dwarf neon rainbows with the combo dwarf chain loach these guys are sweet. And then you've also got the Egg is Easy Eye, Episto, Fire Reds. Those guys haven't come up too much, 29.99, it's a good deal compared to everything else. I'm pretty sure you only get like a medium french fry at McDonald's for 29.99 at this day and age. You, are you hiding eggs in there? Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're doing there, miss? And then you've got this cool Angelicus Pleco hiding in the back. If I stop getting photobombed, enhance it. Oh, we're gonna have to go in for a, a deeper look. Enhance with, there you go, there we go. Orange spots, ooh, two! That's what I like to see. I know, you're all spooked out now. Close her back up. That's something kind of cool, my own lights. First time I've been in the store and really moved lights around uh, then we've got the cherry barbs the males have a bunch of red the females not so much easy to breed that's kind of nice cheaper fish green plants red fish chef's kiss same with these ember tetras right down here you got the same thing going on you got the dolphi quarries which I think have always been overpriced forever good looking fish I just don't think they're worth 19 bucks but they've been like 19 bucks eight years ago and now so I guess now they're a little more better priced got the sunset grommies which are one of my favorites the honey sunsets at $8.99 I think that's a good deal on a fish like that down low we have the Colombian blue tetra I was telling my hairdresser get some of these to disperse the aggression with their mabu or mabunas they have African cichlids in the hairdresser and then we've got a bunch of julii corridoras or the false julii corridora Next up, lots of long fin white clouds. They don't do justice in this because they don't have the long fins yet, but gorgeous, gorgeous fish. And too many Amano shrimp. Ugh, they're so alien-like. Big and small, we'll take them all. Next up, we've got the female powder blue dwarf grommies. I love these. They don't have the aggression of the males. You get all that cool color and they stay small. I don't really like the males as much, just the females that look dope. Then we've got the Beckford's Pencil Fish. Not bad. And uh, some Corydoras Similis. These guys are cool with a little bit of purple on the, the tail 
the peduncle, if you will. That's that part right before the clear part on the tail that almost turns a little purple when they're nice and happy. We have a uh, KFC bucket full of rose lion sharks up there. These guys, when I first entered the hobby, were 60 bucks a piece and only wild caught. Now you can pick up these buttes for $12.99. That's a steal. People used to, you know, flex on other aquarists, be like, I got 12 of these things. That's right, 60 bucks a piece. I got 12. Then we've got a bunch of cor or not corridors, guppies. These white ones are super cool, actually. Like, I would love to breed those, those guys, but I never see the females. I only ever see males. I don't think I've ever seen females for sale. Then we've got some medium assorted angelfish for sale, with some kois, right? And then these spotted head standers, they always have their heads pointing towards the ground. Kind of a unique, cool fish. I've never kept them yet, but they, I like the pattern on them. They're not flashy, but they're neat. And their mouth is always pointed downward. These guys I hadn't seen in person until my own store. These blueberry tetras might come home with me at some point. They are super neat. They're not doing justice on this camera, but boy howdy, do they kind of look blueberry-ish. I like them. Lots of little baby assorted bristle nose, five bucks a piece, come and get them. Come and get this little, this little fat baby. He's been eating, you can see his poop. Down here, this is one of the best schooling fish that you'll never keep. And this is the Emerald Eye Rasbora. If you kind of spook them, you see how they move? They're really good about moving as a group. But they only have a blue eye, which you won't see on camera. And most stores will never have this many, so you'll never know they're actually cool. But these are very cool, and I recommend. They're very subtle. You know, you can see how they get bigger. But they're very subtle, but they look great in Escape. And then we've got 4 billion uh, Cooley Loaches. Cooley Loach House. Loach house. Excuse me, sir. Oh, no, nope, too much, too much. Excuse me, sir, I need to get out. Uh, I need to pay my parking. Excuse me, I'm waiting for my Uber Eats. And then down low, we've got the assorted rainbow fish tank. $21.99. Look at that axle rod eye. That's a good looking one. Look at that female millennium that no one's ever gonna buy. Kind of that goldy silvery color. And those turquoise that someone will buy. You know, everyone wants to buy the females, which is unfortunate, but the males always look so good! And I skipped a tank. Over here, we have lots of flagfish and Siamese algae eaters. You got blackbeard algae? Not for long, these guys are on the case. Look at them eating. Look at them. Nom 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 nom. They're all working on it. We cycle sponge filters through these guys just so they can clean them up. Then over here, we've got the planted goldfish tank. Nope, that's actually a planted goldfish tank. It's not, it's not uh, CG, CG, CGI, it's not AI, it just is. That's right, that is a beautiful, right here, dwarf aquarium lily doing its job. You plant that sucker, you wait, and then you pretty much get rich and awesome. That's what that one does. And then, yeah, we've got some lava rock in there and some valisneria. And we have the Fluval Lights, which kills my soul that one of these days I'll tell my employees to swap out, but it kills me because I already bought them. So swapping them to mine doesn't do anything really because they're still working and we're growing lots of red root floater, but you know. M Big Murphs is already kind of taking a nap. He's getting real old. His eyesight's going. We removed all the Tetris because they were starting to pick at him. So I'm gonna talk with the team and we might take, Murphy might come live at my house and have my wife just spoil him all the time and bring Ladybird to the new Gigantitank. Lots of rock for sale down low, which I realize the lights aren't on. We're just gonna have to deal with it. Chicken bone stone, the Jade Rock. You know, oh man, I gotta name that J Rock. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And then we got Seru Stone, Dragon Stone, we got fancy, oh, that didn't, that, okay, that, we got fancy mountains. Fancy mountains are actually super cool. We also have a lot of light, so they don't look very cool to you, but trust me, this is one of the coolest things in the store. Let's go look at places with light. Oh yeah, I was gonna show off. So this is kind of more like what my store, like I would say this right here. My store kind of looked like that for five to seven years of my life. Now, it's starting to look like this. Oh my gosh, that's a wall of green. And so I get to each one I see, I see 
a trip to go work on that, R&D testing. Like these pads were one of the first things we ever did. And then it was pre-filter sponges down there, right? And bio rings. Uh, and then like tweezers and scissors. Oh yeah, and the, the four-way scoop. You got a four-way scoop, right? What is this? This is teaspoon, half teaspoon or quarter teaspoon. Yeah, ha uh, quarter teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon, tablespoon, does it all. Little measuring glass. The Easy Green was one of the first products ever. This has changed so many times. The label quality is way better than it used to be. Uh, got our own regulator. Soon we'll have our own like GH thing. Uh, not soon. We're, it's through, still in R&D, we're working on it. Lots of little connectors and doodads, all that kind of stuff. So it's just fun to see. I used to have uh, a buddy, Jess the Giant as I call him, who lives about three blocks down the road. He would make these like every month he would he would have to bake them and just get the coconut out and he always have a problem he's like i don't even know what to do with all this coconut it's so much coconut but people wanted the caves because the caves are cool to get moss and stuff growing on them and so yeah we're clearing out all of our aquion tanks because we got our own tanks now fools that's right aquion we got our own yeah your 10 gallon tank 69.99 40% off, getting cheap. The pride and joy, well, the easy green, I like the sign, that was a good job, Lizzie. The pride and joy of my fish store is the quarantine room. Why? Because this is what separates us from everybody else. Most places don't have its own quarantine and they're not actually trying to make sure they're healthy before they go on the floor. We are. So you can see all those fish you saw out there like, oh, but didn't you already have a boatload of neon tetras and rummy nose tetras and ember tetras and cardinal tetras? Yes. But when those sell in two days, we need the next batch to already be healthy and good to go. Ooh, look at this, chocolate grommies. And the pencil fish. So we do, you can see all the meds and all the water. That's what all the bubbles are. You can see we got that going on. Green neons right here, actually. Got more rose lines. And then we've got the drop-off tank. You can always bring back anything we've sold you. Drop it off. We'll quarantine it. We'll get it healthy. And then we'll sell it at an incredibly cheap price. Usually, when we get overflowing with them, we sell them for a buck a piece. Yeah. So you can see here we've got lots of snails because we sell lots of puffers. You can see we've got... Uh, this is all the stuff that came, well not all of it, but all of these rummies came out of Murphy's tank. And I uh, got some mollies there. Yeah, this, this thing, I remember when we built this, when I built this. It's just gladiator racks, and I remember, I think it was like $8,000 at the time for these tanks. And man, was that an insane expense. But we've now used them for like nine years. And boy, did we get the value out of it. Uh, we run it in here a little warmer because we're running this big old dehumidifier right here. And you can see 60% humidity in this room and 80.5 degrees. Over here, this. This is Randy and other high ups in the company and Brandon, the store manager. Like, this is what I think is going to keep us doing well. So this used to all live in my head. And now it lives in other people's heads. But when we hire someone new on, we can go, oh yeah, you wanna learn how to tank, how to gravel vac? We have got a whole process to do this. Oh yeah, we're, you, oh, you, wanna, you wanna learn how to use this thing? Here's how you do it. You're gonna use this thing, you pull it this way, you do this, you do that. You always keep your hand on the hose. And that document lives on. Put that back. And so over time, our goal is to continually keep building out these process documents. We have them at the warehouse, we have them here, so that we're all on the same page, right? If we look over here, we see details of who was getting what. Oh, we had some velvet going on, we had some fin rot going on. We've got Salt and Marison going in with the Bleeding Heart Tetras. We've got Ickex on some of the Bettas. We repeated this. 
you know, notes so that when anyone comes in, if they've been gone for a couple days, they can go, okay, well, where are we at with this? And, uh, and then you've got initials who did it, so you can go talk to the person when it was done. And just over the years, we've had to adapt and, you know, we had to build a little tech closet. So this is actually a battery backup and we have a backup, uh, basically, cell phone so that if the power goes out, we can still sell battery operated air pumps and everything for people. And then I think this is, is this open? Let's see, is this open easy? Or is this gonna be like, yeah. So this is all the staging. So that's our, that's our backup, like wife, or not Wi-Fi, but cell phone. This is all the staging that goes over to the store expansion for all of that. Then we got kind of the little nano section, the plants. Let me uh, close this door. And by the way, we always have it so you can see through. It's employees only, but we want people to know we're quarantining and killing the crap out of fish back there. The honest reality is if you can look back and you see all these fish and you don't see a lot of bodies, yeah, we're getting pretty good at our jobs. We don't really kill a whole lot of fish. But you know that if you see, and I always tell my employees this, if they look back there and they see something dying, that's not good for us. But they know, okay, if that's where stuff's dying, then we know the stuff makes it out here isn't. Now, that being said, there, hey, that tank doesn't have light. If something comes down with something out here, we will turn off the light, stop selling it. You know, so we've got, in here we've got pygmy corridoras, green neon tetras, rubber lip plecos, and a pistogram of panduros. Let's turn the light back on. Boom, hit the mode. Uh oh, that might have been a complete wipe. Yeah. In gamer terms, like, rip. I don't know if we lost them all or if uh, sometimes what we'll do, if it gets really bad, we just move them out and move them back to quarantine and just let this tank sit uh, so we can, you know, we dose it with heavy, heavy salt and meds and we just let it chill. Yeah, you can see there's still meds in the water. We just let it chill until uh, we're confident it's healthy again. We'll try something else in there. Turn that down and off. But most places would try to hide that. And here's what I would tell you. I'm not hiding that, I'm proud of that. You know how many tens of thousands of fish are in this store and kind of go through the store on a monthly basis? This tank alone has 43 tanks packed to the gills with fish and we had one that went down. A lot of times we don't even have the one, but we did have one go down. Back here, got some more little oddball stuff up top like the mascara barbs and the Celebes half beaks. So those guys are. Ooh, dwarf giraffe catfish. I am gonna have to look into that. I am a sucker for dwarf, or for giraffe catfish. I used to have a big one named Dorkula. We got rid of it. We donated it to another pet store when we opened our store. And uh, that's where my wife, Katie, got her online name. She goes by Dorkula. You've probably seen her in live streams and stuff. The plants, right over here. Color-coded system, red means more hard to grow, yellow means intermediate, and green means easy. Get that easy green, get going. Uh, let's see, lots of Congo Tetras and some Peacock Eels. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm on to you. Yeah, you see me here? Chucking you out. All right, and then we've got far too many chili rasboras. These guys look awesome. We've got rosy loaches. That's what these little loaches are. That's about as big as they get, those females right there. And then we've got blue velvet shrimp and assassin snails. You actually think those are assassin snails, but you can't see them because they're hiding. They're assassins. They're ninjas. Over here, we've got scarlet badasses. That's what that is right above that tag. Oh, what a badass. Norman Lamp Achilles and the Red Really Shrimp. And I always say, really? Do people like those? Because they just look like bad cherry shrimp to me. I'm a hater though. Over here, we've got Orange Shrimp. Yes, we do. Dwarf Anchor Catfish. These things are super duper sensitive to salt. That guy right there. Like, I'm pretty sure if you put salt on something you're eating, they die. Like the smallest amount of salt will kill them in our testing. It's crazy, I've never seen anything that sensitive. I'm talking like one tablespoon and 50 gallons, they die within like 12 minutes. Uh, then we got zebra autos, those are doing nice. 
Uh, up top, what are we hiding? We're hiding a ghost knife, an African butterfly fish. Oh yeah, there it is. And a Senegal biter or two or three or four. And a fancy mountain. Look at that fancy mountain. Over here, we've got the Odessa barbs and the rainbow sharks. I took a bunch of these home for my tanks just to help clean algae. Down below, I can't believe they're still here. I thought people would have bought all of our really nice sized uh, rocket killies or clown killies. These things are awesome. But, and they're only seven ninety nine. They've been $7.99 for the past 10 years. I don't know why they're not moving. Celestial Pearl Danios at $9.49. These guys are finicky. Pain to import and uh, keep healthy. Then we've got these exclamation point rasboras. Those are nice little cuties. And some red shrimps. And of course, don't forget, we've got the stickers. Oh, look at that. It's Nermi, the new sticker. Hi, I'm Nermi. Over here, you can try our air pump if you want, if you dare. Down below, as always, the pea puffer tank. It's been this way for 10 years. And then we have the white cloud tank, which has also been like 10 years and 10 years and 10 years. We've got all the frogs and the snails. So many snails. All right. So much over the years I've done here. You know, I, and in different videos, you can see different things like all of this was sustainable maple. This was a post we found in a, we found that post in a parking lot. This was baker's racks that were left here by the former cleaning tenants that we repurposed. Same with that cash register part right there. Um, you know, this live edge, all sustainably harvested. This thing right here, when we first built it, this is the bottom of a bed frame. Like we literally reduce, reuse, recycle, sustainable as much as we can. We still try that. And uh, you know, it's kind of just been, it's kind of cool to see that one, we had to do that because we had so little money and now we can choose to take the higher road and just pay more money to get stuff done uh, that is sustainable. So before it was kind of out of necessity. Same thing, this, this wire rack right here, this is all like reclaimed stuff that we've, you know, just had to make work over the year, well, back then. Um, all right, let's take a quick peek over at the expansion because I've run out of stuff to show you over here and we'll wrap this bad boy up. So this is gonna be kind of a terrible tour because most of the lights are already out. So that doesn't look very cool over there at all, which that's unfortunate, but they're on the timers, cost of Wi-Fi timers and all of our lights that actually looks really good when the lights are on. This is still too bright. We got to install the dimmer switches for the new, you know, the new gunfighter pit where we have a checkout person, 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 a checkout person. And then we got people slinging fish back here with the extra, extra long packing table so we can pack, bring your orders up and get you out the door, which that's been a problem for a while. Over here, we got the new Gigantatron freezer so we can sell, sell all your frozen goods. And uh, we gotta get some kind of cool Corian Quap logo made for that. Oh yeah, this little thing, this little thing over here is a 1500 gallon aquarium. It's twice as big as my 800 gallon. This is the new Murphy home or Ladybird if we bring Ladybird. We've been working on that all day actually before I filmed. And uh, so this is 10 feet back and forth and six feet front to back. It's a big one. It's not really lit up very well because there's only three lights at the moment because uh, I ran out. But we've got a couple big Eheims running it. Also back here, which you can't see because it's too dark. Look at that. Oh, you see that? It's pitch black. That looks real bad. Uh, I can show you a little bit, of, little bit on the ground. That's kind of cool, right? Got a bathroom, green walls everywhere, a new manager office with green. Co-op green with a window to watch the quarantine tanks. I know it's echoey in here. Man, without light, this really looks bad. So let me, where, let me turn some lights on. Maybe that'll help. These lights will never be on normally, but boom, boom. These two are on. Now you see a little bit more. Now you can see water change system all run with Wi-Fi. We've got dehumidifiers up the wazoo. Got sinks everywhere. Yeah, now you can kind of see out here a little bit better. Drywall to do. This door right here. Oh, I never even showed you guys those tanks. I'm bad. 
On the other side, there's a 50, 75 and a 55. This door will be how you get between the two areas. So it will be three times as big. This is all the beta tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lights aren't on, obviously, but this auto water changes. We've got, this will be a new section for us. All these ponds. Normally, it was always really hard to have koi and goldfish and rice fish and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, we will have this. This all is on water, auto water change as well. It'll be lit up each tote, kind of like this right here. And uh, yeah, kind of cool, I think. Adding stuff that we didn't normally have. Over here, I can turn some more lights on. Oh, I gotta, I gotta take the long way. Natural wood, there's a cement pillar behind this. This is all just wood everywhere we could put it, basically. Whoa. Plant racks. Hey, you can see this a little bit more now. The first 15 tanks are gonna be planted tanks because we need to grow that area. You can kind of see what the back wall is gonna look like. And really, I've been trying to keep lots of open space so that you can have people shopping here and checking out and walking in between and not be so crowded. Because the store that you just saw, it's only 950 square feet. And boy, have we been cramped, especially on the weekends. So this is going to be a, a nice welcome addition for everybody. If you're local, if you're visiting, if you work here, it's gonna be nice. Custom aquarium, aquarium that we're gonna put in, have a little install in case you wanna order something up. What's kinda of cool about these is, uh, let, me, let me go around. They have locks and everything. So if you have toddlers at home, you can lock it up so they don't get in there and play with your canister filter, your sump, or whatever you're gonna do. I just, I like these aquariums. They're expensive, but I like them, they're thick. They've got aluminum rims. They come with already the black back on them and everything. So, yeah, we're still, you know, I don't, when you see this, I don't know when this is coming out, but from this point where I'm standing right here, we're still like another month and a half away at least of getting this done. Still gotta put flooring in, the flooring's terrible, but that goes in last. We still gotta stain like under here, right? If we lift this up, oh, it's all unstained. We need to stain it like this back here. We just stained this last week. Now it's dry. It's gonna be good. That's what we wanna see. So yeah. All right, well, that's, that's my fish store. If you were a nerd that owned a fish room and had a dream and worked for someone else for five years and thought they were doing a terrible job, if everything goes well for you, maybe you could own something like this. And I say that because so many times I almost went out of business I had to work very hard, had to eat top ramen for too many years, had to have my wife support me and all of that. We've been very fortunate that YouTube took off for us and Facebook took off for us and you guys care what we do at all. And so now I've got a team of 30 people that all put their, their brain thinking into this and we do okay. So yeah, thanks for the support. Hopefully you'll get a chance to visit someday. If you're local, hopefully I'll open this up and you'll have some fun. But I gotta turn the light off and I gotta go home. It's like 9.30 at night and I still got an hour drive home. So, all right, bye-bye. Thanks for hanging out, aquariumcoop.com.